show for you guys today. We are interviewing Jonathan Wright again, a Bible code searcher who's been in it for many years, and he has some very interesting information that he's going to bring to the table today, reconciling biblical parables. And uh, we're going to dive into a lot of interesting interesting stuff. He's all also has some new information they've come across in the Donald Trump Bible codes that they had brought up last time he was on the show. So we're going to talk about those later on. Um, but first, we're going to dive into reconciling these biblical parables. And he's told me a little bit about it, um, particularly we're going to talk about the, the parable of the ten virgins. And uh, and we're going to go through uh, throughout the scriptures looking at these Bible codes. So, uh, Jonathan, welcome to Now You See TV. How are you doing? I'm good. Thank you for having me back, brother. Yeah, I'm really well, excited. <laughs> you you blew, blew my mind last time diving into this. So tell us a little bit about what we'll be talking about this afternoon. Well, the last time I was here, I spoke briefly about uh, using the codes as a tool to reconcile the, the scriptures. Um, you know, we spoke spoke about the 41,000 different Christian denominations, and each one of these basically di divided over something in the scriptures. Is this supposed to be, are we supposed to be the church of confusion in, in the end times? Or was there a way that the Father knew beforehand that he had encrypted the scriptures, let's just say, or sealed the books, some others may say, um, for us to, to reconcile what he means in some of these, uh, uh, you know, cryptic and elusive scriptures that have, you know, a thousand different interpretations depending on, uh, you know, who you are. Um, so, you know, the past couple of years have been really uh, amazing for me those that have been following my channel have seen me do a really huge change in, in my life. And I want to explain a little bit of that is that's coming out of dispensationalism and the pre-trib rapture belief. These doctrines that I brought up to believe um, when I was trying to, to show codes uh, to prove these points, it was like putting a, a square peg in a round hole and they wouldn't fit. And I couldn't understand this. Until, uh, you know, the father, you know, led me to other data that eventually I was able to deduce that this has to be a tool to reconcile what he means. And this led me into coming out of uh, dispensationalism, led me into the name. There are many people that are, that are now walking in the name of the father. Some of you may not even realize that the father actually has a name. But if you look at your scriptures cl very closely, there are some 400 plus uh, verses that have something to do with the name, everything from call upon his name to exalt his name. Um, you know, you name it, it's there. Psalm 91, which we're going to talk about in just a few minutes, has a mention of the name uh, as, as as well as many other places. We're going to just touch a few of those in the scriptures, but I want to go to a parable that's really famous uh, in the Christian circles. And they're all talking about it. That's the parable of the ten virgins and what they believe it means. Is there a way to reconcile this? And there is. And what happened when I, when I tried to, to uh, dig a little deeper into it, I got into some amazing revelation. That was the name of the father. And so I hope to share that with you guys tonight and, and also a table uh, from Donald Trump that we talked about last time. I know everybody wants to, you know, hit on the sensational stuff, but I want to uh, lay the foundation of why I believe the codes are credible in using them and reconciling or um, using as a second witness in prophecy. There's this misnomer in, in the, you know, the mainstream that the codes are, you know, it's gotta be for predicting the future. Uh, even though I believe that, it contains the future. I don't, I don't believe that that is the primary use for it. So uh, that's what I hope to accomplish tonight in this broadcast. Uh, two, two amazing tables we're going to talk about. Very exciting. All right. Well, uh, where do we start? Let's get right into it. And, um, Russ, and uh, let's, let's go right, right, right to Matthew 25. And, and I'll just tell you, let's, let's see if I can remember how to do the screen share. Right up to the top right. corner, green, green button. Okay. And so. There we go. I see. Are you able to... All right. So here we are at the parable of the 10 virgins. And so uh, let's, let's read this together. And it says, and then shall the kingdom of heaven 
be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, and five of them were foolish. And they were foolish, took their lamps, and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels and with their lamps. So uh, in the first few verses here, we've established what this parable is about. It's about the oil and uh, the issue of being foolish and wise uh, and who these two groups are. There are five wise, five foolish. The issue uh, uh, in, this, in discussion is the oil, is what's in question. Uh, while the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight was the cry made, and behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. And all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. But the foolish said unto the wise, give us of your oil, for, your, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, no, not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. And afterward came also the other virgins, saying, uh, uh, Lord, Lord, open unto us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Now this is really important right here. Um, <clears throat> and most just glaze right over this, this I know you not part. Because uh, what does that have to do with anything? If the ten virgins are waiting for the for the bridegroom, what is what does I know you not have to do with being foolish or the oil? Well, I'm going to show you in just a moment. It says there, "Watch therefore, for ye need know neither the day nor the hour where the Son of Man cometh." And so, uh, this sets up our parable in. Uh, let me see if I can find. There we are. This is the, our parable and what we're trying to figure out. We got the issue of, of five foolish and five wise. Now, in early in the parable, uh, it is is clear that that all have access to the bridegroom. If what? If they're wise. Right. What does wisdom have to do with this parable? He says, I know you not. Uh, toward the end of it. That's a real, a real big key. That in, implies some sort of intimacy, right? What, what, uh, if, if, if you and I are knowing each other, what is the basis of that knowledge? We, we know each other's name, right? So I could call you on the street. If I know you as a friend, I say, Hey, you know, Hey, what's going on, Jake and Jonathan back and forth because we're on that name basis, right? Yeah. So this is this is the key to it. Now, if we use scriptures to reconcile this parable, and, and this is where you have to know your quote Old Testament. Many Christians today just do away with that because it's quote old and don't know what it says in the Old Testament. But if, if you go to Song of Solomon, the secret of this parable can be answered in there. And so let me just take you there real quick. There's a lot for me to share. So, you know, the fact that we're going to go through these scriptures kind of fast, um, it's, it's because at the end, there's, there's a lot of we're going to be talking about. So just bear with me here. All right, screen share. Song of Solomon. Can you see that? Oh, yeah. All right, so very first chapter. The answer is right here to the um, the parable of the ten virgin, so, and we're talking about what a bridegroom and virgins. How ironic is that? So it says, the Song of Songs, which is Solomon's. Let uh, let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth, for your loves are better than wine. And right in the third verse, it says. The fragrance, your oils are good. Your name is the oil poured forth. Therefore, the maidens love you. So right in the third verse, we are told the answer to why there is an issue 
of I know you not in the parable of the ten virgins. Guys, get a, get a hold of that. Why does the bridegroom tell five of those foolish virgins that he knows them not? It has something to do with his name. It says here that his name is the oil poured forth. Now, um, if, if you are not studying Hebrew, and I hope that we can, where did my camera go? I hope we can see this on, uh, on the screen. I'm going to take my little writing board. And uh, I'm going to do a few letters in Hebrew. Now, we didn't get to practice this beforehand, so I'm not sure how, how good this is going to show up. But I want you to, to take a look at this with me and see the, the similarity of these two words, which the first one is Shemi. So we got a Shin, a Mem. Can you see that? Yes. Shemi. That is my name. Add a noon to that. And this is a Shin. Uh, I know that looks horrible, guys. But if you add a noon right there in front of the yod, these these two words are very similar, right? Mm -hmm. Shemi and uh, Shemini. First one is my name, and the next one is fragrance or oil. Oh wow! Are you able to see that? Yeah, yeah. I do. They're very similar. Very similar. Shemi. The first one is my name, and the other is fragrance or oil. Now, we just saw that in Song of Solomon. It told us just that, that your name is oil. Your name is a fragrance. It's, it's something poured forth. So now we have a parable that's given us some clues. We have scripture that just gave us a little bit of bearing of what those scriptures mean. Here's where the the codes come in as a witness. So if I can, let me make sure this is going to. Let me get my camera. Hang on. <laughs> Screen share. There we go. So now we're going to go and look at. See this? Um, I don't know if it's screen shared just yet there. Hmm. That's going to be an issue of that. Oh, there it goes. Yeah, there we go. All right. Now it's screen sharing. OK, so you're able to see this. Yes. All right, now I've, I've produced uh, a, um, a video on my channel on this um, this table already. So some may have may recognize this right off the bat. But what we have here is uh, encoded in the scriptures um, is the, my name is the oil. Um, just to just to kind of set this up. Uh, I apologize. Just to kind of set this up, I want I want to um, recall what what I talked about the last time I was here is that when it, anytime you find an access term, that first term which I just showed you, my name is Yola, is your key term. This is what we're going to put into the computer. The computer is going to search all of these scriptures to see if it's there. If it is there, it's going to show it's a matrix. If it's not, it will show no um, a no result at all. Not everything that you type in is going to is going to show up. But if you're looking for something and say you're trying to reconcile the 10 versions. Name is the oil. Well, all of those letters have to fit just right. Anything uh, out of the out of that sequence, we'll, we won't find it. Mm -hmm. And it just so happens that my name is the oil appears in the scriptures twice. We're going to look at one of those examples now in doing that. This the the segment of this cylinder. Remember, we talked about the scriptures in a in a code are wrapped around a cylinder. And I don't have a cylinder. All I have is a cup. It'll wrap those 
scriptures around a cylinder and we will see a, a window on one side. This is the matrix that we're going to be looking at. Okay. All of the scriptures in that window out of, out of the 30,000 plus scriptures, you will put those scriptures for us to see it when we find this key code. And yes, he did know he put this there for us to find, right? So there's where we are. Let's go back to the table. And uh, now we've, we've caught up on a little of the fundamental uh, information because there are going to be some people that are asking questions or what are we looking at? Why, why is this relevant? Right. Yeah. So here we are back at um, equidistant letter sequences. Um, right. Last time. And so for those who maybe not have seen the last uh, interview with Jonathan, um, it's basically a, a distance between each letter. And um, and it's if you wrapped it around um, a certain length each time, then whatever lined up um, with that equal distance between each letter that's where the code comes in. And uh, so, yeah, please uh, dive into it. You know, I, thank you for taking that time to go back and, and kind of explain the basics for somebody who might not have seen the last interview. Right. Yes. And I, I'm, there's always somebody who's who needs to be caught up on what's going on. So as as uh, Jake was talking about, there is an equal letter distance between each one of these letters. These are not just random letters that we picked out. This actually says says my name is the oil and incidentally there are 10 letters now that's that's a pretty interesting feat uh to to find 10 letters in a sequence such as this um it is pretty staggering uh typically you're able to find um you know access terms and then find ex what's called extensions later uh letters that we see in the same pattern that may you know tell a more uh broader story um, this was right out of the gate. We were able to find my name is the oil. Now, all the highlighted verses here, and we're going to cover some of these, um, are, are what I believe the Father has has got for us to to see in this code matrix. Now, some of the ELS uh, codes uh, verses, uh, excuse me, words. I'm very nervous, by the way. If you haven't noticed, <laughs> this is very exciting for me, and uh, this is also very nervous. Um, work to do we have the parable and the virgin that come together as an ELS what is um, equal letter distance also we have the word codim which is the, the uh, Hebrew equivalent to Bible code is uh, what we use today in modern times to talk about Bible codes we also have the um, modern equivalent and, and the reason I say this is because in ancient times, during the time of Joseph, this word is what was used in the story of Joseph in Egypt for uh, what he did. He was an he, he was an accountant, basically he counted the grain um, and per portioned it out to people. But this is the word used there, the same word used today for computer. Uh, and of course, the computer is, uh, you know, critical component to the Bible codes. They, they go hand in hand. Another component would be the Holy Spirit. You just can't pick this up and expect that the Father is going to reveal things to you right off the bat. Um, some of the some of these verses I want to cover and just kind of show you guys how each one of these um, has a message to it that he's laid out for us to, to read. So if we go to this this first one, which is in Jeremiah, and I got it highlighted there because we're talking about the name. Here's one of the names of the Father, which is Yahweh Zavuot, uh, which is more commonly said by Christians, the Lord of Hosts. In Hebrew, that is Yahweh Zavuot, uh, and this is what it says in Jeremiah here. Um, and set up a standard upon the walls of Babylon and make the watch strong. Set up the watchmen and prepare the ambushes for Yahuwah had both devised and done that which he spake against the inhabitants of Babylon. O thou that dwellest upon many waters, abundant in treasures, thine end is come and the measure of thy covetousness. Yahuwah Zavaoth has sworn by himself, saying, Surely I will fill thee with men such as caterpillars, and they shall lift up a shout against thee. Um, so the, the, the key component we're looking at is the mention of his name. 
Uh, and then skipping on down a little further, we're at Joel here. Uh, and what's interesting to me is all the verses that we're going to see in this virtually are speaking to the end time remnant. These are these are particularly uh, interesting prophecies that have not yet happened, let's just say. Uh, so we're here in Joel. And uh, let's just start where it blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders and gather the children and those that suck on the breast and let the bridegroom go forth out of his chamber and let the bride out of her closet. Let the priests and the ministers of Yahuwah weep between the porch and the altar and let them say, spare thy people, O Yahuwah, and give not thine heritage to reproach that the heathen should rule over them. Wherefore, should they say among the people, where is their God? Then will Yahuwah be jealous for his land and pity his people. And yea, Yahuwah will answer and say to his people, Behold, I will send you corn and wine and oil, and ye shall be satisfied there within. And I will no more make your reproach among the heathen. But I will remove far off from the northern army, and I will drive him into the barren uh, land, barren and desolate, with his face toward the east, and with his hinder parts toward the uttermost sea. His stink shall come up, and uh, ill savor shall come up, because uh, he hath done great things. Fear not, O land, but be glad and rejoice, for Yahuwah will do great things. Be not afraid. Ye beasts of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness do spring, for the tree beareth fruit. Be glad, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in Yahuwah, your Elohim, for he hath given you former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain, the latter rain in the first month. And the floor shall be full of wheat, and the fat shall overflow with wine and oil. And I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten, and the canker worm, and the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, and my great army which I sent among you. And you shall eat plenty and be satisfied. And praise, look here, and praise the name of Yahuwah, your Elohim, that he had done wondrously with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. So I, back, I, I backed up and got a, a more of a fuller context of what's going on. The most important thing there to, to point out was the praise of the name of Yahuwah, your Elohim. Um, then down in Zephaniah. Now this is really heavy right here. Zephaniah. Again, an end time remnant prophet of uh, the end times that uh, has yet to to happen. Look what it says in Zephaniah. We'll start at the very beginning of it. Woe to her that is filthy and polluted to the oppressing city. She obeyed not the voice. She received not correction. She trusted not in Yahuwah. She drew not near to her Elohim and her princes within are rowing lions and her judges are even wolves and they gnaw at the bones until the morrow. And her prophets are light and a treacherous person. Her priests have polluted the sanctuaries and have done violence to the law. The just Elohim is in the midst thereof, and he will not do iniquity. Every morning doth he bring his judgment to light. He faileth not, but the unjust knoweth no shame. I have cut off the nations. Their towers are desolate, and I made their streets waste. That none pathes by, their cities are destroyed, so that there is no man, and none is inhabited. And I said, surely, if thou would fear me, wilt thou receive instruction? So their dwelling should not be cut off. Howsoever, I punished them, but they rose up early and corrupted all their doings. Therefore, wait upon me, saith Yahuwah, until that day that I rise up to the prey. For my, for my determination is to gather the nations that I might assemble the kingdoms to pour out mine indignation, even all my fierce anger. For all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealous, jealousy. For then will I turn to the people of a pure language that they all may call upon the name of Yahuwah. 
to serve him in one consent. From beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, all my supplicants, even the daughter of my dispersed, shall bring mine offering. And in that day, thou shalt not be ashamed for all thy doings, where thou hast transgressed against me. For I will take away out of the midst of thee that rejoice of thy pride. And it shall no more be haughty because of my holy mountain. Again, a mention of the name. Uh, then in Zechariah, this is very interesting because in Zechariah, uh, many recognize what's going on here. We're right in the realm, um, <laughs> the second coming of Yeshua. Um, Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of trembling to all the people round about. When they shall be in siege, both against Judah and Jerusalem. And in that day, I will make Jerusalem a burdensome stone for all people. All that are burdens themselves, it shall be cut into pieces through all the people of the earth shall be gathered together against it. In that day, saith he who I will smite every horse with astonishment and his rider with madness. And I will open mine eyes with uh, upon the house of Judah and will smite every horse of the people of with blindness. And the governors of Judah shall say in their heart, the inhabitants of Jerusalem shall be my strength in uh, Yahuwah. Uh, Yahuwah their Elohim. In that day, I will make the governors of Ju Judah like the hearth of fire among the wood, and like a torch of the fire in a sheaf, and they shall devour all the people round about, and on the right hand and on the left. And Jerusalem shall be inhabited again by her own, in her own place, even in Jerusalem. And Yahuwah shall also save the tents of Judah first. And the glory of the house of David in the glory of the heavens of Jerusalem do not magnify themselves against Judah. In that day shall, uh, in that day shall Yahuwah defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And he that is feeble among them in that day shall be as David. And the house of David shall be as Elohim, as an angel of Yahuwah before them. And it shall come to pass in that day that I will seek to destroy all the nations that come against Jerusalem. And I will pour out upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and of supplication. And they shall look upon me whom they have pierced. And there you see the connection to Yeshua right here. And they shall mourn for him as one mourneth for his only son. And it shall be in bitterness for him as for is in bitterness for his firstborn. Um, and then we have just right after that, of course, the Battle of, of uh, Armageddon. Um, but skipping on down to this next verse, which is in Psalms. And again, Yahuwah has each one of these lined up in this table for us to see as this key term and locked it. So we'll back up and go um, to right here where <clears throat> with the merciful thou wilt show thyself merciful. And with an upright man shalt wilt thou show thyself upright. And with the pure wilt thou show thyself pure. And with the forward thou wilt show thyself forward. For thou wilt save the afflicted people, but wilt bring down the high looks. For thou wilt light my candle, the Adonai, my Elohim, will enlighten my darkness. For by thee I have run through the troop, and by my Elohim I have leaped over a wall. For as, as for Yahuwah, his, his way is perfect. The word of Yahuwah is tried, and he is the buckler to all those that trust him. For who is uh, Elohim to save the Adonai? Or who is the rock to save our Elohim? For it is Elohim that girdeth me with strength. And make my way perfect. And I thought that there was a mention of the name. And it may be before that. But let's, for the sake of time, let's just keep on going. Uh, here's another one in Psalms. This may be the one I'm thinking about here. Yeah, right there. Psalm 68. Uh, we'll back up to verse 5. Because look what we have here. Sing unto Yahuwah. Sing praises to his name. Extol him that ride upon the heavens by his name, Yah. This is the only place I believe in the scriptures where Yah is used. 
and rejoice before him. How about that? Um, and then, of course, uh, this one I have highlighted. And I, I forgot to tell you guys, the vertical anomaly here is there's life in the parable. Now, I want, I want to point this out because I want you to see where this stops with this yoke right here. The high, which is life. You also have in this direction, which is mercy. Chesed. High and chesed. So there's, there's life in the parable. What parable is that? Well, let's, let's go to right here. This may look familiar to you. For my beloved to, unto me is a cluster of camp. Excuse me. Let me back up. <laughs> the Song of Solomon. Let me kiss. Uh, let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth. For thy love is better than wine. Because of the savor of thy good ointments, thy name is the ointment poured forth. Therefore, the virgins do love, love thee. And that is. Uh, very profound that there's life in the parable and it's pointing right to the Song of Solomon, uh, which I told you before is uh, where you can find the reconciliation of what those ten, uh, the parable of ten virgins is. Uh, if we go down, let's see, just take a look and see what that is. 323. I forgot what would. All right, for it is of you whose mercies that we are not consumed because of his compassions fail not, and they are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. I don't know why I had that highlighted, but um, it's good that a man should hope and quietly wait for the salvation of Yahuwah. And incidentally, that is <laughs> that's the Hebrew word for Yeshua. Um, so, and uh, Nehemiah. Just, just be sure if this one had anything to do with the name. This is in Nehemiah, by the way. And it doesn't it doesn't mention the name. My apologies for that. So um I'll stop sharing, but I should have kept talking with it opened up, but I'll just talk right here like this. So as you get to, got to see um, all these anomalies that line up with uh, my name is the oil. First, we have the, the access term in itself, which is by itself is an amazing phenomenon to, to happen. Um, but when you compound the, the verses that we just read, uh, several there had some mention of the name then it's probably safe to say it's probably the oil. If it says in the encoded, my name is the oil. Now, this is how I came to the conclusions in many of uh, my research um, uh, topics that I did, preacher of rapture, uh, the dispensation, how I came out of um, the church has um, replaced Israel all through what I just showed you. Um, through a process of reconciling the scriptures, um, it it's, seems very clear to me that there was not supposed to be confusion among the remnant in the end times. There has to be a way for us to know what the Father means. And I think I, I just showed you um, uh, one way, I believe, is, is using the codes as a tool to find another witness can we reconcile what these what these things mean um incidentally uh i want to take you to some people say why does this even even matter he knows my heart i call him god he don't you know i don't have to to call him by his name well let's go and take a look at some scripture here because in malachi let's look at this first malachi there's a book of remembrance that is in heaven, guys, if you didn't know that. And for the simple fact that if you're watching this broadcast right now, guess what? Your name is actually in a book of remembrance because we're, ta we're talking about his name. It says in Malachi 3, uh, verse 16, And they that feared Yahuwah spoke often to one another, and Yahuwah hearkened, and he heard it. 
and a book of remembrance was written before him that feared Yahuwah, and that thought upon his name, and they shall be mine, saith Yahuwah Zavod. In that day when I make up my jewels, and I will spare them as a man spareth his own son that serveth him, they shall return and discern between the righteous and the wicked, and serve between him that serveth Yahuwah and him that serveth him not. Incidentally, Malachi has several places that, that it mentions the name. Over in Malachi 1, uh, in verse 6, we can start here, and it says, A son honoreth his father, and a servant his master. If then I be a father, where's my honor? If I be a master, where's my fear? Saith you, Zavaot, unto you, O priest, that despise my name. And ye uh, say, where have we have despised thy name? That's pretty profound. When we see the 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 uh, theologians and the the ones that are in the pulpit who see this the very same scriptures that we see, yet they may come against those that are using the name, almost as if they despise it. Uh, here we find actual scriptures that make reference to that. I, I think that is. Um, very profound information. I see that all around me today. Why is this important? Well, in Psalm 91, there it goes again. If you know your scriptures, it's very important because he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. That's a very intimate place to be, folks. I will say of Yahuwah, He is my refuge and my fortress, my Elohim, and I will trust Him. Surely shall uh, he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust and his truth shall be thy shield and thy buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that waiteth at noonday shall fall by thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh to thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made Yahuwah, uh, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. And there shall no evil befall thee. And there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh to thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. And they shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou shalt dash thy foot against a stone. And thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder. And the young lion and the dragon shall you trample under your feet. Because he hath set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on a high because he hath known my name. That is says a lot about Psalm 91. Again, an intimate connection to the Father. Why? Because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble, and I will deliver him and honor him. Even uh, with long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Um, brother, we could go to a couple of hundred more scriptures just like that, um, where it is screaming that this name is important. Now, we're not, we're, we won't get into the pronunciation. I don't think that is an, you know, an argument. Um, just the fact that he has a name that and probably be trying to find out what that is. Because in the day of distress, the scripture says in the day of distress, the Gentiles will call upon his name if they don't know his name um it's a, a big question so um any questions from you so far i just kind of been rambling on brother i i really enjoyed that that was a very powerful a powerful thing that you've been studying in with this whole topic of the name um and especially how it's associated with this parable of of the ten virgins and the oil um, because there are yeah. so many theories regarding what is this oil um, and 
what a and all are great all are great theories yeah but which is right how do you know what's right absolutely uh, there has to be a way to test it i think and you know i think it it's really <laughs> um it's really cool and and of course you know we want to be the five part of the five virgins that are let in and um and you know, with with studying this out, you know, maybe if you could ex expound a little bit more on on what you're seeing with the importance of of calling on His name and knowing His name, because we want to know Him when He shows up at that midnight hour, um, and we want that oil in our lamps as believers. Um, and if you know, you I see a lot of evidence here that seems to support this idea that knowing His name, calling on His name, fearing His name. Um, that is what this oil is. So, if you could speak, speak more to that topic, um, you know what you know. What are your thoughts on how do we be one of the five that are let in um, versus those who are ignoring his name, possibly those who he doesn't know? Well, there is a, a, a currently of all an identity crisis in the quote church today. A disconnect um, b between uh, the believers. And the father you have to look at is, you, you know, Yeshua came in his message, restoring us back to him and exalting the father. He even says in either Matthew 17 or Matthew 15, and I'm going to be in trouble with my wife for not knowing that. But Yeshua was actually praying. I revealed your name to them. This is very powerful information because of the scriptures that I just told you. There are 400 plus that I'll talk about this. And, and we're told that in the day of distress, we're, we call upon his name. We saw in Psalm 91 that um, important for in a time of distress, we'll call upon him. He'll be there with us. Um, you know, the fact that it's uh, been removed, let's just say uh, very nicely by the, by the Jews. In what was called the Babylonian exile, um, Nebuchadnezzar had an edict that these Jews could not pronounce the name. They couldn't say the name. Um, you know, and you remember from the story of Daniel and um, the other young men, they were, you know, re rebelling. Didn't want to bow down. Didn't want to eat the meat. There was there were people in in this community that were making it very hard for for Jews to to survive. It was taking the name from them. Now, this was done during the Babylonian times. And even during the time of Yeshua, um, most Jews, most uh, Hebrews didn't really know what the name was. By that time, which is uh, several hundred years, had forgotten about it. The only ones that knew it were the ones in the temple at the time. They, they still had access to the name. And this is why the Talmudim in the Gospels asked themselves when, when Yeshua comes back, how does he know the letters? Um, they didn't say scriptures. They say, how does he know the letters? I submit to you because Yeshua was proclaiming the name. He was teaching the name of the Father. It had been concealed. Now, going to the, he uh, the English translation with King James Version, and that was concealing of the name. And, and what happens was everywhere yud heh vav -He in the scriptures appears, and it's some, you know, 6,000 times. It was replaced with Lord or God, um, uh, just a, a translation in the English to what this name was, a, a, a title. They just replaced it with a title, as you say. Um, and this has remained for the, for the, the length of, of uh, time we've had in the, the, the scriptures in print, right? Uh, 1611, I believe, they, they, this name was still there, but you know, basically the past 400 years, it's been replaced and believers haven't had access to it because they haven't dug into it. They hold on to what they're being taught uh, in the pulpit. And those pastors either don't know the name or the scriptures say they despise his name. And this is why they're not teaching it. Um, it's very critical that we get this information and why this is now, the foolish virgins, the reason why they were foolish was because you can't buy knowledge. You can't buy his name. That's why they were foolish in the first place, believing that you could buy it. It's it's becomes from an intimacy with the father. And that's that's how we have access to oil. This oil that we're speaking about, this 
Some may want to call it anointing. I've even seen where uh, they interpret the, the Holy Spirit is the oil, which is a very good interpretation. But as we just showed from the scriptures, it's more along the line with the name. And we see the similarities even with the Hebrew words. Just one letter added. Is it from Shmi to Shemini, um, from my name to oils or fragrance? To me, very profound. Uh, you know, it as the as the code revealed parable, understanding the 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 wisdom is understanding these parables is life, and that's why Yeshua spoke in, in these parables, not only to hide it from uh, from a the world, let's just say, but um, to tell us something very deep in the uh in in the book of revelation we see a a sealing of the people of god with his name um being put on their foreheads um and i think that's a very interesting parallel with what we're talking that's right. about here um that's right and we like we read it in, in zephaniah he returns us to a pure language what pure language is that i would submit that is the hebraic language i i personally believe Saying this, I personally believe the intimate tongue of heaven is Hebrew. Um, it's to me. The scripture says he returns us to a pure language and, and they praise his name. Hmm. Um, very profound. Wow. Do you have any more on this that uh, you would like to bring out and, and demonstrate? I think this is very good. Very good. Story. Well, we could talk. We could talk for you know hours and hours on the name, but I know most of the the viewers want to talk about codes that are more sensational, and uh, I do have some more information. Um, well, the the Trump table. If you, viewers don't remember, if you didn't see the last broadcast, we talked about a very profound table that has Donald Trump's name, only that Professor Rips had found. Now, um, the fact that that I was working on this table. Let me just set this up. The fact that I was working on this table, and anybody could have found it, uh, Donald Trump's name, um, it's a Donald of Donald and his name. Anybody can type that into a code program that has one and find that his name on a skip of 460, which is a very small cylinder, people. This is like, um, and the reason it's got me kind of freaked out is because Bean table, which is also on a small, uh, actually happened. The table with Donald Trump is even smaller. And if we go by the the, um, the methodology that closest, closest proximity, smallest skip equates a more profound code or uh, a predictive code, then we need to pay attention to this because it has his name there and uh Professor Rips found an anomaly right next to it in uh, sort of like a Twin Towers um, uh, pictograph that uh, there's a name of an assassin there. Not the proper name, but, but the actual phrase, the name of the assassin. Let's just go and, and take a look at that real quick. What, what we have there. Now, I've, I've been looking for proper names. I have to confess that because it implies um that assassin and here's the the anomaly that i'm i'm talking about here uh the name of the assassin and donald trump which goes in uh actually that letter doesn't belong there um for those that don't or didn't see the last broadcast um just some quick um terms that are in here we've got uh, a warning down in the yellow down here. Um, also, just ex just like, uh, or in other words, in the same skip, which is 460, is Cyrus. Um, many may remember we, we found the connection to Donald Trump being the 45th president and Isaiah 45, which is uh, where he would declares Cyrus is my anointed. And look at that. We have Cyrus, a very close proximity. This is profound. Not only that, but right next to Cyrus, we have the Mashiach, which is uh, the anointed. It's also vertical over here with war. You can see that black and yellow uh, word there. This is war, and Cyrus was a war 
uh, king. He, he did a lot of conquering, and incidentally, he, he did die in battle. He lost his head. Um, I don't know what has that to do with Donald Trump, but if there's parallels between Cyrus the Anointed and Donald Trump being the anointed of Yahuwah, and I believe he is, I believe that, that the Father has put him there to accomplish his will. Um, and just like he put um, um, Obama in there as well. Um, I'm looking for the other. There's one more. <clears throat> there it is there. I knew it was in here somewhere. There's also another Mashiach in the plain text. So three times we have Mashiach um, in this table. Again, very small area. Uh, where we have president, um, right here we have Nasi, but in the previous broadcast, I didn't tell you guys what was here because I didn't really realize it, but uh, not only do we have president in the plain text, which is we use this to... Uh, determine whether or not we thought that Trump was going to be the president of the United States. And it was unanimous across the board as far as uh, myself, Chris Ray, and um, uh, Rabbi Glazerson. A year before Trump was elected, that it seemed like he was going to be president. But in the plain text, it says um, the president that or the prince that sins. Um, now, right under his name. Well, we see the dollar there running in the other direction. We have minyan. In Hebrew, a minyan is a council of 10. Um, I, I thought that was pretty amazing that right up under his name is a minyan. Um, some may not realize what, the significance of that, but think about that. A council of 10 would be what, guys? Um, you tell me. We have moed, which is appointed right here in that mem from Minyan, okay? Then we have three sixes that come off of that, that's 666. And then you have that middle six is to be the first letter in uh, is murdered. You see, is murdered runs right across his name and the, the term of the name of the uh, assassin. Um, we also have, this is a new, a new term. This wasn't here the last time we talked. Uh, from within, and this indicates from very close proximity of him himself. In other words, his house, there may be even those that work around him, the Secret Service. Um, I see a strong connection, guys, to Donald Trump and JFK as far as the deep state goes. JFK was taken out from within, even, even though you may see it differently. Um, the evidence points to an inside job. A lot of collaborators and conspirators in the JFK murder. Uh, in this table, it is indicating that if anything happens to the president, it will come from within. Now, what does that mean? There's, there's several possibilities. Either those that are close to him enables something to happen to him, or they actually do it themselves. So, uh, logic dictates if the table says the name of the assassin, then there must be a proper name in the same proximity. And so what I've been looking for was proper names in a vertical, uh, in a vertical anomaly. And I found a couple that I believe that are, you know, may be significant. They may not be. We will only know in hindsight uh, if they are. These could be people that are tied to him as Secret Service or in his personal life. I don't know. Um, but there, there are pro proper names. I mentioned one before, which is Romek. And the reason why I kept this, because the prefix in front of that is he is Romek. Um, and I kept um, Miller because Miller is in sh striking proximity to the name of the assassin. But I kept it because it's Miller comes or is coming. Uh, and it is also the same thing over here with bow. For those that don't know the word bow in Hebrew is coming or is or, or comes. Um, Shrot, uh, let's see. I forgot how to pronounce that, but this is also a proper name. Um, Shro, uh, Shrotek, Shrotek. Yeah, Shrotek comes. 
It's also right next to the the next year, the 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 year after the one we're in is right here in these letters. But also in the blue letters, which is really amazing anomaly because it's the same letters backwards and frontwards. The Aleph, Lamed, Mem, Lamed, Aleph, or Aleph, Lamed, Mem, Lamed, Aleph. Uh, in Hebrew, it's a phrase which is, had it not been for. Um, so it had it not been for, and then that year are tied together really tight like a rope. We have 666 stacked on each other with the word sowed, which is secret. Um, and then back over here, what we have Cyrus and appointed, and then Mashiach there, we also have uh, going down is the blood. So we have the blood and he is shot. You have these four letters here as he is shot. The same four letters as these, he is shot. And uh, going this way, we have a mountain of despair. Um, I think that is all of the. Wow. That, the that is some fascinating stuff. Um, I know we talked about before some of the other uh, world leaders that seem to pop up in the Bible codes, um, even before anything happened to them. And uh, people even tried to warn them. Um, and it, it turns out that they were assassinated and and that the names of the assassins yeah. were found there in the codes um, next to these right other there. previous world leaders. And so the parallels with what we're seeing with Donald Trump and JFK, for example, are just um, it's definitely something to pay attention to. Absolutely. Um, and I don't know if you've been paying attention much to the uh, the Q anon stuff and the the deep state white hat black hat stuff that's been coming out on the news um just recently um but some very yeah. very alarming stuff have you looked into any of this uh uh QAnon kind of inside you know uh information coming out online um regarding the deep state my wife has been on top of it and she passes to me things that she might think is a significant to look at and uh it, it some of it is it does seem like that there are have been two Different cues. Um, there seems to be a pattern change somewhat, uh, but it's it's yeah, some amazing uh, information. It has to be somebody from the inside that is passing things out to us. Um, uh, but there's nothing I've I've been able to pull out of it as far as looking at codes. Um, if anyone has any ideas, I'd be happy to take them. But um, I haven't found anything personally. Yeah, just in reference to those, um, the reason I think it, it it's a significant thing because um, in these kind of drops that we're seeing from these insiders, we see absolute corruption being pointed out. We see there's white hats and black hats that are in a battle that's behind the scenes um, in the government um, regarding Donald Trump. And uh, uh, they, they expected Hillary Clinton to win this. And you brought that out in yeah. the Bible codes whenever you were looking at the election that um that hillary was going to steal um i think is one of the points that you brought out um and so there's yeah. only this this battle between the white hats and the black hats um in the government um you know of course everybody has their own agenda and, and a white hat could be you know just just as <laughs> sinful and bad of a person as a black hat but you know yeah. there's there's all these competing factions it seems like and so the environment is rife for something that we see like an assassination attempt um, or something to be brought against Donald Trump to get him out of office because he absolutely has stuck his foot in the in the, the gears of the, the one world government that was trying to, you know, funnel through Hillary Clinton and, and the Obama regime. Um, and so. Uh, yeah, that's why I kind of brought that up because I think it's you know the, just the the turmoil and 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 the way that the climate is in regards to this political atmosphere with Donald Trump and the and the never Trumpers and and all that it it's it seems like this is a very plausible thing um, that could come uh, as things heat up. Yeah, that's that's right, brother. Listen, we don't we're not seeing a lot of things that are going on behind the scenes, but let me tell you what we just. Just had a, a, a warning. You you are aware of this in, in Hawaii here of a missile launch. Now, I don't know what happened. I don't know if it was an accident or if there was something 
that was actually fired. But, but the talk here on the island and, and some witness was there was a missile launch from the island of an interceptor missile. Um, that people saw this happen. Now that that's disturbing to me. That that implies that we were in some point engaged in war uh, with whoever in this with us. Um, there's there's talk uh, about this being people from the deep state enabling this or or instigating this to happen to get Trump drawn into um, what they wanted in the first place, which is an all-out nuclear war. Um, you know, Agenda 21 and the thinning out of the world population, folks, is a is a reality that you may not be aware of, that there are people who who control the chess pieces, uh, so to speak, of countries and dictate what they will. Um, the fact that Donald Trump is in there and it seems like that the father put him in there to accomplish his will to drain the swamp. Um, there are people who don't want that to happen and uh, very similar to what happened with JFK and his brother who were going to change Washington and um, do things differently. And people put a stop to it that, that were in very uh, high power. We see the same thing happening with our current president. Now, of course, the father has his hand on him and nothing will happen to our president until he was done with him. Um, so let's just be real clear with that. Uh, he will accomplish his will. But if it's if if it's in his will that something happens, there's nothing we can do to stop it. Um, I do know this. It will be a time of, of great distress and dark cloud over this country if something happens to this man. Um, unlike we've ever seen before, possibly 9-11 could be the closest that I could think um, of, of the type of mourning this country will see if something happens to him. So uh, I pray that that's not the case. But the fact remains that we find these things encoded in the scriptures. What do they mean? Well, if we go on the, the historical references that we have, uh, credible codes that actually came true, then we, and we can only assume that this is a high probability something like this could actually happen. And again, you will forbid. We don't want to see that. But again, it's there. What do you do with it? You know, uh, one of the things that you were going through previously um, on uh, when we were talking about the ten virgins, um, you actually stumbled across um, one of the the proof texts for something I've been studying out personally. Um, uh, the concept that there's a place referred to as Jerusalem, and then following that, uh, Yahuwah says, "I'm going to choose Jerusalem again in Judea." And um, and that was a trigger, you know, put the red flag up for me for something I had mentioned to you before we started the show um, regarding the United States. And um, it's something um, we're going to put out a uh, I think we're going to do a midnight ride on it. For those of you who are listening, this is just a, a little tidbit um, for you to chew a on teaser. a little teaser. Um, but the concept yeah. that America is not in biblical prophecy is ridiculous, I believe. Um and uh, and I think it, it it actually has a more major role um, scripturally than than we've been led to believe. Of course, there are associations with the daughter of Babylon, with Babylon the Great, and the Babylonian system. Um, but there seems to be an identifier that I'm chasing this rabbit trail, um, and it, it's really some interesting stuff. And it and it has to do with a scriptural Jerusalem that is not fortified Jerusalem there in the land of Judea. Um, and of course, I'm going to have all my bullet points out and my proof text and my scripture already whenever we do that episode on that topic. But whenever we talk about you know what is coming to America, the thing that could really set off a judgment here, a catalyst here, would, would start with a very particular world leader um, who, who, if something happened to him, it could it can make very it can make things very rough yeah. very quick here in the yeah. United States, and so um, you just I think it would dash it would dash a lot of people's hopes. And let me let me just say this: I see this just trend going on, it's, it, it, particularly on you, uh, Facebook, where people are exalting Trump as a savior, as is he's going to save us all. He's going to make America seven times greater, and all these other things that I've been hearing. And people are putting so much hope 
Um, and and to a point, that's great. You know, there's nothing wrong with supporting our president and being patriotic, but to start putting him on on a pedestal and exalting him as some sort of savior, you know, he may be a good man. I don't know him personally. Uh, you know, I, I see good things happening with America and, and positive things, but I won't go to as far as to to do that. But but there are people who, and I think there was the same thing going on with. JFK as well. There were people that just honored him so much. He was almost like a God that is bad. Um, and especially putting all your hope and your faith in that he's going to do something what happens to him. What happens to those people? Uh, where, where is your faith and where was it supposed to be in the first place? Um, I would check that if, if you're one of those people, um, he is only a man, a, a vessel that the father's chosen but never exalt him as, as if, you know, he's our savior. Uh, yeah, I know. I've heard that in many Protestant churches. Um, you know, I, I, even though I've tried to remove myself um, from the primarily Sunday keeping church, I still fellowship with people who, who don't get Sabbath and they don't get Torah and they don't, they don't get that, you know, those things are for us today. I still try to um, have relationships with believers who, Certainly have a heart for God and because there's always a chance that somebody who might not get it will get it eventually um, because um, I, I don't forget the place that I came from um, and and uh, and I don't think we should ever forget that we were in once in their shoes That's right. you know, worshiping on Sunday and and using the name Jesus and and, and singing That's Lord right. Lord um, but you know there's always a chance God will wake somebody up um, from their tradition and from from the um, the the Sunday keeping church that has rejected in most part the the commandments of God, um, and so there's it's always good to fellowship with people like that. But one of the things I constantly hear preached out of those pulpits is just what you're talking about. Donald Trump is our savior. He's he's the the uh, we're going to take America back. This is where we're going to basically you know flip things around, and it's going to be the great revival. Um, but unfortunately they're not aware that a great re revival is already happening. It's people waking up and starting to return to the word of God, apply the commandments to their life, be more like Yeshua. Um, and, and even what we talked about today with the 10 virgins, um, you know, finding out about the name of God that has been removed right. 6,000 plus times in scripture. You know, I can't think of a more exciting time to be alive in that God is revealing these truths to his people. And that is a revival. Amen. In um, and they're waiting for a, a big, a big move of the spirit of a bunch of, you know, people, you know, becoming, you know, repenting and stuff. And that is so important, and we need that. And of course, tribulation often often is associated with revival. So whenever times get rough and times get hard, people often repent from their sins, and that's what we see. But we can't think that Donald Trump is going to keep judgment from coming. Um, and that's. Right. We need to we need to look around us and look at, you know, we live in a nation of priests who constantly profane the Sabbath and hide their eyes from his Torah. And that's exactly what we see in Ezekiel 22 that talks about, you know, the, the you know, the, the the priests who they hide their eyes from his word and his ways and his name. And and that's what we see in the modern Christian church today. And it's only because we've inherited those traditions and it's tragic. Right. That's why it's so important to go back into the word and start applying it to our life and, and grab hold on onto his name and 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 also, you know, keeping our testimony of Yeshua um, because we see a great falling away happening too of people who yes. deny the Messiah. Um and I just wanted to make a comment um about what you were talking about with the attack on Hawaii. The, the timing mm -hmm. is really interesting of having you on today because just this morning they were releasing some news regarding that um, and that the person who released that emergency uh, s service message um, thought that he had to do it because a, he believed an, a, an attack was imminent. And it was wow. a warning he was sending out to people, a desperate you know, attempt to warn people, this is an, an imminent, imminent thing that's going to happen. And, uh, and that's what I saw in the news this morning that was just coming out. So it's very cool that we had somebody who actually was there in Hawaii when this emergency message went out saying, guess what? Nuclear attack incoming. This is not a drill. I can only yeah, imagine crazy. the terror that you guys would have been feeling. I was, in a, I was still asleep. I was still asleep. And my wife woke me up as her phone is 
eh, 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 screaming and stuff. And she shows it to me. So I'm coming out of a dead sleep and see this. And so I was like, what? So very first thing I did was start messaging people on the, on the mainland. It's like, give me some feedback. What are you guys seeing? Because uh, I don't see anything here. For 30 minutes, it was like nothing. We, we just, all we had was this message that everybody got on their phones, but no explanation for like 30 minutes, right? Um, and then we hear stories like I just told you, and uh, you know, and you start putting things together after the fact. You're like, "What really? What really happened? You know, did did something happen? And they didn't want us to know about it, but some some courageous uh, schmo just said, "Hey, we gotta tell somebody." I, you know, who's to know? But um, we we all reacted here on the island. There were, there were some people that acted a little more extreme. They started getting into uh, you know sewer systems and stuff, but. Um, I think it was a, a, a great test for those um, who want to know what it's like or have a reaction time uh, in, a, in case of a real emergency. I could tell you this. We were basically standing around going, what do we do? What's what is this? I mean, is this real? And I would imagine had it been a real there would. I mean, that's exactly what you'd get. People delayed in their reaction, not knowing what's going on and what's what's. And, and this would probably compound uh, compound the confusion for the next time. Do we say, Oh, was it a drill? There was somebody, you know, messing around. What do we do? Cause like, it adds to the confusion and the, 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 maybe the time you need to get to safe ground or whatever. I don't know what the protocol would be for here. Uh, apparently there are sewers you can get in. I didn't know that, but, um, yeah, for, for 15, 20 minutes, we didn't know what to do. Um, I, we just, you know, I didn't have any fear. First of all, let me just be clear about that. Um, but, you know, there was nothing to do. You know where to go. All we could do was enjoy the, the sun shining. And, uh, you know, if it happened, it happens. We, we get to see the, the Messiah before everybody else. <laughs> so that's all, you know, there was no fear, though. Just yeah. a little kind of confused of what was going on. Yeah, you know? I can imagine uh, it, it was a very rude way to be awakened. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. It was not fun. So um, we, we do have one question um, coming in uh, this afternoon, uh, and 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 it was Femi, and she was asking, you know, does not being of the world also mean we need to stay silent in regarding choosing leaders, and and should we even vote? Um, you know, what are your opinions on that? Um, the scripture that talks about personally being in the world. Uh, pers personally, um, uh, I, when when I felt the call to come out of her, um, as, as far as participating in the sins of Babylon, um, I haven't voted. I didn't vote for President Trump. I didn't vote for for Obama. Um, uh, he I, he'd stopped me from doing that. I didn't see a a purpose in it. It's not like this is really a democracy, um, as we almost saw with Hillary Clinton. These things are already predetermined. It's just a matter of going through the formalities in the in the charade, let's just say, um, until we have our another leader. It's not Democratic or Republican. Um, that doesn't matter. It's those in the deep state that are really running things. So I haven't participated um, in voting, and uh, you don't have a right to. Of the most high in the first place so um he obviously had a purpose and a will and uh we just have to wait it out and see but uh, the answer to your question is I, I i personally don't and i can't say that for everybody but that's just where i'm at I, i'm i'm moving on to the millennial kingdom and, and if we're not already there i'm i mean in in my mindset of thinking um my king is is on his way awesome um, and if you could just wrap up one one last you know word on what we talked about today with the reconciling the ten virgins, you know, it, just to, if you were to package it all up of what we should have got out of that um, talking about it today and looking at the codes, um, you know, what would you just say? I would just say this: there is a difference, and because someone say, "Well, he was wrong about Hillary Clinton stealing." Uh, I saw this the last time. How can we believe whatever else? There's a difference between unknowns 
and knowns uh, as far as constants in searching things out. If we're looking for something biblically um, and we have witnesses and we're trying to triangulate, let's say, a topic, um, you can do that very accurately with the codes. Now, if you want to use it for a crystal ball, the margin of error is very big and it's not very reliable as far as trying to predict things to happen. Now, there have been times where uh, something's been shown and we have gotten very close into our interpretation of, of uh, what we're seeing. Um, but for the most part, I believe that it's a tool to, or a witness um, for the scriptures to internally um, interpret itself. Um, it has to be that there is a way for us in the end times in a time. I call it the church of confusion where everybody thinks they're right, but no one is. We all have just a piece of the puzzle there has to be a way for the father to reconcile and bring us back to restore us back um, to, to the way. Um, and I think that's, that's the purpose of the, of the um, codes. It's unfortunate that um, men have sold books under the premise that it's um, pre predict the future. Even though the future is contained there, that is not the purpose of it. I, I think it's to, to draw us, get our bearing back to him. Awesome. And if you could share where people can find you on YouTube and some of your other research. You can find me on YouTube at uh, thecodesearcher.com. I also have a web page you can find um, at thecodesearcher.com. Or Twitter at TheEcodeSearcher.com. I'm also on Facebook, but that's under Jonathan Wright. So if you find me over there, uh, send me a friend request. All right. Thanks for having me on, brother. I, I really appreciate uh, the, the time to, to bring this message. Absolutely. And, and we would love to have you back um, if you if you you know get some research together on any of the other parables um, and, and reconciling sure. through the codes. It's so fascinating. Um, kind of what we brought out today. And um, for those of you who are watching, thank you for tuning into Now You See TV. Uh, I've been your host, Jake Grant. And until next time, everybody, shalom, high five. Shalom. Take care.